I'm Charles, and I'm on a mission to find what's inside everything. To help me get my answers, I have an industrial CT scanner. It takes a whole bunch of X-ray images from all around a subject, and then builds a 3D model revealing every internal detail. Today, I've gone and stolen a pair of Even Reality's G1 AR glasses. This is all a plastic enclosure with electronics inside, so we should get a pretty clean image. In 2013, Google Glass was a thing that existed. 12 years later, we've all pretty much stopped laughing at the concept of smart glasses. Most of us already live with a smartphone six inches from our face every waking hour of the day. What's half an inch? So, that brings us to today. <laughs> Even Realities took a different approach. Instead of squashing a smartphone down onto your face in an ugly pair of glasses, why not just squeeze the bare minimum tech to do something truly useful into there instead? The G1 smart glasses don't contain a full color display in each eye. Instead, they have a low-ish resolution monochrome green display that's bright enough to be red under most circumstances and still has enough detail on it that you can get important information across, like real-time audio transcription and translation or directions. So what makes these things tick? What do they have to pack inside of here to get that display working? And why do you have this dingly dangly bit on the end of the arms? Let's take a look inside. All right, let's take a look inside of these AR glasses. First things first, let's take them off and put on my real glasses. So, what all's going on inside of here? And why do they have these bingly dangly bits at the end of the arms? And if we can possibly figure it out, how do they get an image in front of you when all the display is off to the side? So let's separate a couple things out right quick here. This, and this, and this, and this. So those things aren't actually part of the glasses. Those are just magnets making the case more satisfying. And you gotta give them credit. Pretty satisfying case. Another part that's here, just in the case, is this entire large battery. Now that battery actually eats up enough room that if you pull up the scans, with the link in the description below, you can see for yourself on the attenuation map a lump representing the battery itself and its particular attenuation range. But curiously, we kind of use this to our advantage because I imagine the battery that's actually in the glasses will have a similar range. And sure enough, as we sweep this slider back and forth, we can see this here and this here are the batteries that are actually in the backs of the arms of the glasses. Let's see if we can figure out what else they've stuffed inside those arms. So also in the arms, we have an inductive charging loop. And this mates up with an inductive charging driver loop that's actually inside of the case. We also have some big old magnets that are actually going to draw those two pieces into perfect alignment to get maximum charging efficiency. That's pretty clever, I like that. Now curiously, they're doing the same thing on both sides. So this thing actually has two charging loops that it's using at once to deliver more juice into your precious electronics. It really feels like we're in the butter zone for getting like crisp, crisp detail of the electronics. But it only feels like that until we actually have to look at the intricate parts. Tucked between the battery and the charging loop in the back of the arm here, we have a whole smattering of electronics and None of these are jumping out at me as particularly recognizable right off the hop. We have some form of BGA component, likely a microcontroller. What appears to be wire to board connectors, by which I mean blobs of solder connecting wires to boards. But the conductors start to get a little small and indistinct at this particular detail level. So I think I'm going to punch this in a little tighter on the ends of one of these arms. And we'll see if we can find anything more going on. So looking at this with a bit more resolution, we can see a pretty high density connector of some sort in here. And I put a decent amount of money on that being the connector that actually goes to the projector. Speaking of the projector, let's dig in. Because this, this really just is the fun part. Something that immediately stands out looking at this is glasses, the lens usually doesn't extend out into the hinge. But they're doing something in here that's warranting having this glass extend out into this whole big hinge assembly. And that's got to have something to do with how the light is actually traveling from inside this hinge to out into the display. And if you look at these in just the right light, let's see if we can pull this off. See that blue glint? That right there. You see that little blue and green glint? What that is, is it's some form of light passageway. I'm no optician or optical engineer or nanotech engineer. Frankly, I'm in over my head, but it is cool that we can see evidence of what they're building and why it's there. We peel this back a little further, and sure enough, there's our high density interconnect again. And this, for all the world, really just looks like a bog standard LED matrix display. We have the connector coming in from the arm onto this little board. 
Then we have micro wires flying over to this panel. And that panel is the actual display. That has the green LEDs on it. And it may have some form of micro lens array or something built into it, but that is actually the display there for sure. Now that display then gets focused down by this guy. Now, I won't even pretend to understand how this lens is doing what it's doing. We have each of our pixels on here. And those are getting focused through here and they're ending up in this light guiding structure that's built into the lens. And of course, the features on a light guide like this are way too small for us to pick up on this X-ray. That looks for all the world like it's just a 2D pixel matrix, monochrome pixel matrix. And if I might go on a slight ramble for a moment, that's, that's all I've ever wanted in a device like this. I don't actually want full color AR for anything. I just want to be able to read text and we're good. So let's talk about what else is going on. Well, we have this package down below. Now I'll admit, something I hadn't considered is perhaps doesn't have any orifice or aperture on it. So I think that this whole package is actually just, uh, it might even just be an accelerometer. Now, why would you want an accelerometer on here? Um, it's actually dead simple. It's because the way you interact with these things is by staring up at the ceiling until it brings up the interface. So you need to do tilt detection. Now, you could also do that in here. However, the other thing the accelerometer lets you do by having it up there is detect whacking the frame and, you know, with your finger to be like, you know, hey, computer. And that is something that modern accelerometers actually have built into their onboard signal processor. It's the ability to distinguish like a single tap, a double tap, a shake, and it just takes a lot of burden off the person doing the hard programming by putting it on somebody else having already done the hard program. This does still leave the question of what's going on in this little backpack. And honestly, I'd believe that it was just connectors or some form of signal processing in order to drive the display. There's a degree of speculation here, but I think everything's pretty well founded. If you don't agree with what I have to say though, you can take a look at the scans yourself and tell me in the comments what I got wrong. Please, I wanna learn just as much as you guys. One thing I do wanna track down still is, is there a Bluetooth radio just chilling somewhere? Now I have only looked at the one arm piece. I guess this is the, this is the right arm, but I don't see anything to suggest that there's a Bluetooth radio in here. One thing I am realizing is these are a very space constrained package. So it's entirely possible that it is using a chip antenna of some sort, where it's just a little component that's soldered on and looks basically indistinguishable from anything else, which would make it a little hard to spot. Oh, you know what? I got that wrong. These packages that I said were accelerometers aren't accelerometers. No, those right there are microphones. Yeah, because you want the microphone to be closer to your mouth than to your ears so that it's picking up what you're saying, not what you're hearing. So those packages are definitely microphones that would make way more sense and it would also be a more familiar metal can package rather than a QFN package that you'd expect an accelerometer to be in. Uh, they have one on each side and actually on the bottom of the glasses, you can see, you can see the little hole where they've added a port so that audio can get in. So where is the accelerometer then? Well, it's, it is just going to be another integrated circuit in a sea of integrated circuits so it won't be necessarily the easiest thing to pick out. Check out the scan below. If you can identify which chip here is the accelerometer, you win internet points. We'll like your comment. There you go. So is that what you expected we'd find inside of here? Me? Not at all. I expected to find way more weirdness in between our LED matrix and our actual glasses. But I guess all of the weirdness, all the magic is actually just inside of this thin piece of customized glass. That's kind of upsetting for me because it means I can't show you guys something cool here. But what are you going to do? Sometimes you just can't win them all. Hope you guys enjoyed and I hope you learned something. And if you want to follow along, check out the scan in the link below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave us a like. And if you want to see inside of something, leave a comment with your suggestion. If you want to support the channel, share this video with a friend or check out hacksmith.store. And if you want to see inside of everything, get subscribed.